much for the invitation. So before I start, uh, I'd like to emphasize the collaboration between uh, these physicists and engineers with the uh, chemists. So actually, I'm uh, uh, working with uh, Professor Ozerimaz in NUS and Professor Ahn uh, from John Rogers Group, who is an expert in flexible electronics. <laughs> so together with uh, you know, more than 20 members in our group, uh, we are working very hard uh, toward the real applications of graphene. So I have also many industrial collaborators, uh, including Samsung and LG. Uh, so why uh, these big companies are interested in the graphene? Because graphene has a lot of uh, excellent properties that can be used for transport, transparent electrodes, and you know, semiconductor applications like ultra-fast transistors, RFIC, and photo gas sensors, and ele energy electrodes for supercapacitors, uh, secondary batteries or fuel cells, and the composite materials for cars and aerospace applications. And also, graphene can be used as heat dissipation materials, uh, useful for LED light, light, lights, and backlight units of the displays. And also, it's very useful uh, as gas barriers and also the printable inks. And if you read uh, this review paper published in Nature Photonics, actually, uh, this paper very summarized the doctor electron applications graphene, including uh, silicon solar cells, organic solar cells, DSSC, OLED, ultra-fast photo detectors. Uh, as you see here, this is graphene-based uh, smart windows, and then this graphene-based touch screen. And in addition, uh, graphene has very uh, unique optoelectronic properties, absorption properties of light. Uh, it's, it's from blue to uh, UV to IR, usually uh, the other comp competing materials uh, uh, show strong absorption either in uh, red or blue, but graphene is extremely transparent for all uh, range of the light wavelengths, which uh, is better uh, for optoelectronic performance. So in this talk, I'd like to uh, introduce why graphene is so important in modern technologies and how to enhance the sheet resistance of graphene. And then, work function control and applications for flexible electronics, and then I will summarize my talk. Okay, so why graphene electrode? Of course, you know about the transparent, uh, because it is transparent and flexible, and, and in, in addition, it has tunable work functions and tunable sheet resistance and transmittance. Uh, particularly, it has very low contact resistance with organic electronic materials. So if you use graphene for OLED or OTFT or organic photo photovoltaic, you can get higher performance uh, than the case of using uh, ITO materials. So from the end of 2008 to 2009, uh, these three groups uh, reported the CVD growth of large-scale graphene on polycrystalline nickel. Uh, as you probably know, the history of the graphene growth on nickel is more than 40 years uh, long. Uh, but I think this group uh, synthesized graphene on polycrystalline nickel and transfer onto insulating substrate and then measure their FET property, uh, property for the first time. Uh, and in the case of nickel, it was very hard to control the number of layers. But if you use graphene, you can get monorail coverage uh, greater, greater than 95%. Uh, so if you look at this Raman paper, it's, uh, very, it's defect free and it's very simple process. And then uh, I think probably that this method uh, triggered industri industrial applications of graphene. So in addition, uh, as observed, as, as reported in this paper, uh, actually this quantumer, ca quantumer effect can be measured in the chemically synthesized graphene on nickel and also on, on copper. 
So this indicates the quality of CVD graphene is as high as that of mechanically cleaved graphenes. So last year we reported voltural production of ultra large scale graphene using uh, this copper foils. Here we have used uh, polymer support to hold the graphene while we etch away the backside copper layer. And then we transfer graphene onto uh, arbitrary substrate uh, using this simple voltural process. So we have used uh, this film to fabricate touch screen like this. And then uh, it works uh, perfectly as, as I show uh, later. And uh, nowadays, we are trying to lower the uh, synthesis temperature using uh, the plasma techniques. Because if you use uh, 1,000 Celsius temperature, it's very hard to you know, machine on the chamber. So if we need to, in that case, we need to use quartz or ceramic chamber. Uh, but if you cool down the growth temperature uh, below 700 Celsius, then it is possible to use metallic uh, chamber. So recently, we have uh, synthesized graphene on uh, the polymer substrate. After we deposit nickel layers on top of PI poly, P, P, uh, poly emit, and then we grow graphene at uh, 300 Celsius. And then uh, if we uh, etch away uh, this nickel layer, actually this is transfer free. Only nickel layers are uh, dissolved in this etching solution. Uh, although the, the property of graphene is not so good, we can get very uh, uniform films uh, at this low temperature uh, growth. And uh, the advantage of uh, this method is that we, we just pattern all the, the copper circuits, copper lines on glass or a, you know, film. And then just by simply growing graphene on top of copper, you can passivate uh, the copper layers. Or you can tune the contact resistance between this co uh, copper electrode with uh, the channel materials uh, that can be enhanced, which can be in, uh, used for the enhancement of uh, the backplane TFT uh, performances. OK, now we are uh, collaborating with Samsung TechWin to realize the continuous production of graphene, uh, combining the uh, ISP CVD process uh, with this ultra production. Uh, I think we are trying to make the, the pilot line within two or three years, uh, but the real application is it depends on the market. So I don't know the future where, but we are trying, uh, we are trying our, our best. So recently, uh, it was reported by the Rice Group that we can grow graphene using the solid source. And then sometimes, uh, and the other group also reported that just put uh, the cell phone cell monolayer under the nickel, uh, under the metal layer. And then if you grow the graphene, then uh, actually, the graph, that CVD graphene is transfer free. And also, uh, this uh, actually in this paper, uh, it is shown that the homo vapor scale homogeneous bilayer graphene film can be synthesized by chemical vapor deposition. Uh, but based on uh, my experience, actually, I doubt uh, this, uh, this result because. Uh, sometimes we see this kind of, uh, these multi-layer graphene flowers uh, grown on top of or under the, the monolayer graphene. And then it's actually their alignment is not uh, you know, single crystal line. So if we observe the Raman spectra, so although the, uh, the optical contrast indicates uh, this, uh, the flower shape is kind of bilayer, but their Raman spectra are quite different. Using SKPM, uh, you can, uh, the work function can be measured by SKPM. And then we found that uh, this part is not AB stacked bilayer. So this is twisted, twisted, uh, twisted bilayer. So I guess it is very hard to get uh, uniformly aligned, you know, the AB stacked bilayer in wafer scale. So I think this. Wave scale of uh, bilayer growth is quite challenging. Okay, then uh, I'd like to show how to enhance sheet distance of graphene. 
there are a few you know, factors uh, for the sheet governing the sheet distance property of graphene. So as you probably know, the charge carrier density is proportional to doping level. So if you assume that mobility of few thousand, and then at this doping level, we can get 100 ohm per scale uh, from monolayers. And many very, uh, many very are trying to dope graphene with a wet chemical method or the iron liquid on, and something like that. But we have used the polymer, uh, ferroelectric polymer to dope the graphene, uh, you know, strongly dope the graphene. So after we uh, put the graphene between this electrode, uh, put the ferroelectric layer between this uh, electrode, and if you polarize, actually we can strongly adopt the graphene uh, with uh, this ferroelectric polymer. So as we apply graph, the voltage from 50 at 50 volt, 100 volt, and 150 volts, uh, the resistance drops almost 10 times. The theoretically, uh, the sheet resistance of monolayer is as low as 17 ohm per scale. So if you stack four monolayers, uh, then you can expect uh, the, sheet, the sheet resistance smaller than 10 ohm per scale, uh, which is uh, the ideal for optoelectron opto applications. So there are even, even stronger uh, the ferroelectric materials like PZT, so eventually we can reach, uh, you know, of, of you know, 10 to 14 level using this uh, ferroelectric materials. So anyway, if you dope graphene very strongly like this, uh, probably uh, the optical transition between uh, this range uh, is, is not allowed. So if you, for example, if you dope graphene by one electron volt, so all transition corresponding to red color is blocked, so graphene, you know, the, is transparent to uh, this absorption range. So this means that we can tune uh, the optical transmittance or the tra absorption of graphene uh, by tuning the gate electric volt or the doping level. So uh, the Berkeley, in Berkeley, uh, the Fengang group used this property to uh, realize graphene-based broadband optical modulators. Here, uh, the transmission of the graphene was modulated by gate voltage. So in this uh, voltage range, it shows uh, quite a uh, you know, large absorption, but in this case, uh, the grains, lights are transmitting uh, through the graphene. So uh, this graphene shows a very nice optical modulation uh, over very long uh, range of the wavelengths. Also, the refractive index of the graphene is changing uh, according to uh, the environment. So, so we can use this uh, after we coat graphene, uh, after we coat optical fiber with the graphene, then if you tune, uh, if you change the environment, uh, the surroundings, then, pro then the uh, you can change uh, the reflecting the graphene so that you can change uh, total internal reflection inside this optical fiber. So you can use uh, this phenomena uh, to make a graphene-based optical fiber sensor. Okay, so, and NUS group and then the Cambridge group also reported the use of graphene as a saturable absorber then uh, this, this is very useful for optical communications. And there are more graphene-based uh, terahertz, terahertz application useful for the security, you know, uh, imaging, or defense technologies. And I'd like to skip this one. Okay, then nowadays, uh, this, these are the issues for the, the people who are working on graphene synthesis. So what does limit the conductivity of graphene? There could be uh, grain boundary ripples or subject roughness. So I'd like to introduce this, uh, this one by one. 
So if we annealed graphene, uh, got the copper foils for an, uh, an hour, uh, the grain size of the copper foils is larger than a few, a few centimeter scale. And then graphene grows across the grain boundary like this. This means that the growth of graphene on copper is not epitexture. And as you see here, the graphene can grow on 111 or 110 or in 200 surface of the copper. Uh, so we think that the single crystallinity of copper is not so important to improve the quality of CVD graphene. And in this paper, in this theory paper, uh, they claim that this, the angles or the periodicity of the grain boundary is very important for the electrical properties of graphene. And uh, actually, the Cornell group imaged uh, the grain boundary of the graphene uh, using uh, aberration corrected TM techniques. And you can see hexagons, heptagons along these uh, grain boundaries. And they claim that uh, these grain boundaries are not, not so important for the electrical properties. And then also they map uh, the uh, grain size of graphene using this dark field uh, TM techniques and found that the individual grain size is smaller than micrometer scale. But I think in this case, uh, the color of graphene is not so good. But we often see uh, the graphene domains larger than millimeter scale. Uh, if you carefully control the, the graphene growth uh, you know, conditions. And in this paper published, published in Nature Material recently uh, by the Purdy group, actually uh, they can grow uh, this hexagonal shape of graphene flakes using the ambient pre pressure graphene growth. And then they found that uh, you know, this merging, along this merging line, uh, actually the grain boundaries are forming. And this is 2D peak, uh, D peak of uh, the Raman spectra. And then they measure the transport, proper, transport property across the grain boundary. And they found that uh, this grain boundary is critical uh, for electrical properties of graphene. So, but our uh, opinion is a little bit different. Uh, so we also gra grow graphene on top of uh, this copper and then measure their property. And then we found that there is a strong temperature dependence uh, in this case. This means that uh, there is some you know, the additional factor uh, for, uh, the, you know, the, uh, for the electrical purpose of graphene. So as shown in this paper, recently published in PRB, actually they artificially you know, control the morphology of copper. And they found that you know, the, because of the copper roughness and the thermal, negative thermal expansion of the graphene, we often see this uh, multiple, multiple uh, force of graphene uh, when we transfer graphene onto the flat, uh, to the flat substrate. But in this case, uh, the density of this multiple the force are uh, just one or two uh, in probably 100 micrometer uh, scale. So this means that uh, if you make a few micrometer large device, uh, this multiple folding uh, is not uh, uh, so important. So you're trying to find uh, a reason for this one. And then you found that if you grow graphene on top of uh, this large stages of copper, and then after transfer the extra surface area uh, from the step edges uh, can make uh, this you know, the nano ripples. So, and then we try to measure the uh, electrical property of the graphene uh, along or this is the parallel to a uh, perpendicular to this, uh, the ripples. And then we found that uh, this geometry shows a more temperature uh, dependence. Uh, so we assume, and the density of these nano ripples are you know, a few in the micrometer scale. So I guess we should see these nano ripples in all the devices uh, based on CBD graphene. So this minimizing the ripple density is very important to control the quality of graphene. The, this is our story. So this temp temperature depends on parallel 
geometry and horizontal geometry and this, this uh, doping uh, dependence, uh, then uh, we conclude that the controlling the roughness is very important. So if you carefully look at uh, the surface of uh, the copper, copper uh, after the graphene growth, so in this case, there are a lot of uh, you know, step edges. And in this case, it's almost atomically flat. So if you compare the mobility of the graphene from this flat area and uh, this rough area, this mobility from flat area, a graphene from flat area is almost 1.5 times better than uh, this case. So I think this is another evidence for our conclusion. So in this paper, recently published in the chemical, uh, chem chemical materials, actually they tried to control the roughness of the copper uh, using this electro polishing method. And then uh, they found that the color is much better than uh, that of this uh, rough copper surface. So now we are trying to uh, polish the copper foil uh, with this electro polishing method or mechanical polishing method. And then we get uh, enhanced uh, sheet resins. So that this uh, substrate often is extremely important. And also, as reported by Columbia Group recently, recently, and they claim that the graphene grown on copper 11 surface is better than that of graphene on copper 100 surface. Uh, I don't know the reason very well, but probably because of the uh, good lat lattice uh, matching with the gra of graphene with this copper. And uh, so the, we are trying to control the crystalline orientation of copper using this electroplating method. So if you use roll-pressed uh, copper foil, the most of the crystalline orient orientation is 200. But after ele uh, for the electroplated copper, it's mostly 101, which has a lower surface energy. So I think um, you are trying to use uh, this method uh, to get uh, one on one dominant surface to enhance the sheet based on scrapping, but uh, we don't have any results now. Uh, this is another evidence of nanorepair fo formation. Actually, the barbarous uh, actually uh, trans first float graphene on top of water, and then uh, they transfer this graphene onto this uh, silicon oxide, and then we see no ripples, uh, nano ripples. This means that nano ripples uh, can be you know, released or removed uh, when we float a graphene on top of water. Uh, so I think this is uh, a very smart, uh, nice way to remove the nano ripples uh, to get a uh, higher quality of graphene. So our conclusion is that the nano ripples is very crucial, uh, then we need to control the number of uh, surface roughness of copper. And also the substrate is also important. So if you transfer graphene onto this rough PET substrate, the sheet resistance uh, can easily go up to kilo ohm, kilo -ohm uh, per scale. That means uh, after transfer, some of graphene can be suspended uh, and or broken. So we need uh, to use substrate uh, with uh, the buffer load, you know, whose roughness is smaller than five nanometer. Uh, so I guess this is also important. So as you know, if we use uh, bilayer uh, hex hexagonal boron nitride film, we can enhance sheet resistance graphene. And then because sheet resistance graphene is inverse, uh, inversely proportional to the mobility of graphene. So we try to grow. Uh, large scale graphene, uh, large scale hexagonal boron nitride, as suggested by uh, Professor Ajayan Group in Rice University. So they are using uh, ammonia boron source like this, and then uh, it can easily decompose into boron and nitrogen source uh, like this. So here uh, we hit this uh, solid source of ammonium. Uh, Brain, and then uh, the gas is going to this growth chamber. And then we can grow the large scale, the boron nitride, very easily. And as reported by Aj uh, Ajayan Group uh, recently, we can grow graphene, uh, boron nitride on top of graphene. They first uh, 
grow graphene on top of copper, and on top of, on top of copper, they claim that they can grow boron nitride epitaxially on top of copper, uh, on top of graphene. And actually, this we reproduced the result. Uh, this is our image. Surprisingly, the boron nitride is growing very well on top of CBD graphene. And this is uh, this hexagonal boron nitride grown on the graphene, and then their thickness is ranging from 5 nanometer to 20 nanometer. This is not single layer. Also, as reported in carbon recently, uh, they have used gra uh, grow graphene on top of hexagonal boron nitride without using any uh, catalyst. So in this case, it was very hard to reproduce, but we have some evidence that we, the graphene has formed on top of hexagonal boron nitride. Then what does it mean? So we can actually make a super lattice of the boron nitride and graphene by you know, the growing graphene and uh, graphene in turn. So I think this approach is very important uh, to, for the future, you know, the applications of the 2D materials. Okay. And so ideally, uh, we would like to reach this limit. Uh, so 10 ohm per scale at 90% transmittance is kind of critical uh, the value for the real applications of graphene. But now, uh, graphene is not as good as ITO at the moment, but I guess uh, utilizing the previous approaches, you, it would be possible to overcome this limit uh, in the near future. And finally, I'd like to introduce work function engineering for the solar cells. Uh, so here, by combining graphene with silicon, you can easily uh, make uh, the solar cells, but in this case we need to we need shocky contact. But if you uh, use four layer graphene, uh, the four times transferred graphene, then uh, it makes uh, ohm contact, which is not good for solar cell effect. So although the conductance of the four layer graphene is much uh, higher than the monolayer, it doesn't show any photovoltaic effect. Why show the monolayer graphene shows very nice photovoltaic effect. This means that work function tuning is sometimes Im more important than uh, the, the lower, uh, higher conductance of graphene. So we can control the work function uh, using the self-assembly monolayers. Uh, these molecules uh, are covalently attached to the silicon oxide, so this is non-volatile. So is very stable. Then after that, we transfer graphene onto the self-assembly monolayer. Uh, by changing the functional group of self-assembly monolayer, uh, monolayer with electron donating or like electron withdrawing group, we can feed up or end up graphene. So after we pattern the self-assembly monolayer, then after we transfer graphene, we measure the Raman, and then we see strong you know, doping effect from this Raman spectrum. So using this method, uh, we selectively tune the work functions of graphene from this red color to blue color. And then uh, the FET uh, performance uh, was, uh, can be enhanced. So we can get better mobility and better high performance by tuning uh, these work functions of graphene. So graphene is particularly important for the organic devices. So we have made great have used graphene electrode as the electrode source and drain electrode for pentacin FETs. As you see here, we can, we can get 100 times smaller contact resistance and or more than 10 times higher mobility by using graphene electrodes for the or, or pentacin uh, FETs. So, okay, graphene is flexible, uh, so it is the perfect material for flexible electronics. And, but graphene doesn't have any gap. So in that case, we can combine this with the property of carbon nanotube with very large band gap. So we have used carbon nanotube as channel materials and then use the graphene as source, drain, and gates. And then we can realize uh, all carbon, you know, the transparent and flexible devices like this. And the on-off ratio is reasonable and then uh, so 
In addition, also we can combine uh, this with the uh, silicon nano ribbon. So very thin silicon materials are very flexible. So pro this work is done by Professor An. So they have used silicon nano ribbon as channel materials and then use graphene for source strain and gate and realize these transparent and flexible devices. And this work uh, is done by Professor Tao Li in Postec and Zhong Yun An. And they have used uh, the nitric acid doped graphene to replace ITO materials. And as you see here, uh, the luminous efficiency is uh, 1.5 times better than that of uh, the ITO based devices. Actually, we don't know reason exactly. We, the shield distance of ITO is 10 ohm per square, but graphene uh, shield distance is or, or close to 100 ohm per square, but, but the performance is better for the, the graphene uh, devices. I think probably this is because of uh, the work function matching or the, the better hole injection efficiency. So they, and they uh, you know, use this method to make uh, the OLED lighting. So graphene shows very uh, linear response to the, the strain. So the graphene can be used as, as a strain gauge. This work is done by Professor Jong Yun An. And so we need also transparent heater for uh, these car windows or uh, the windows of airplane or the helmet. Uh, this, this is defogging uh, windows. And graphene shows very nice perf heating performance as a transparent heater. So I think it's useful in the future. So graphene uh, can be used in thermal spreading materials. So it's very, it shows very efficient cooling when it is coated on the metal or any kind of materials. Uh, so we demonstrate the use of graphene electrodes for the uh, gallium nitride uh, light emitting devices. And recently, Professor Kuchari uh, in Seoul National University to grow gra the zinc nanorods on top of the graphene without using any catalyst, and then make the, the multi-shell you know, gallium nitride wet, uh, LED uh, rod, and then they uh, demonstrate the, their light emitting performance is very nice. Okay, and then the quantum dot can be synthesized uh, by using graphene as the electrochemical templates, and these uh, quantum dots can be combined with graphene, uh, and uh, they can, can be used as the quantum dot LEDs. Recently, uh, we are collaborating with uh, the Seoul National University quantum dot uh, LED group, and then used graphene as a anode and cathode, and then uh, after carefully tuning uh, the size of the quantum dots, uh, we, we realized the blue, green, and red emission from the quantum dot uh, using the graphene as anode and cathode. So as you see here, uh, this light emitting device is very flexible and transparent. So I think it's possible uh, to use graphene used for uh, this transparent uh, you know, displays. Sorry. Oh, this is the graphene. Uh, OLED lighting based on graphene electrode. Okay, so <laughs> finally, I'd like to give you some keys. I'd like to ask this question to the youngest scientist in this room, uh, uh, Andres' uh, daughter. <laughs> okay, what do you expect next? <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah, most you can expect carbon nanotube or something like that. But actually, I asked the same question to my daughter, and it was like this. <laughs> and so the reason I am showing this one, so if you assume this gold LED is graphene, and the size of uh, most gas molecules are as large as this uh, football. so. You can use graphene as uh, gas barriers. And 
for the stable operation of organic uh, LED for 10 years, we need this water permeation rate, microgram per square meter per day. But there's no material that can reach uh, this performance. So the best one is the barracks from DuPont uh, with 10 negative uh, minus 4 gram per square meter per day. And they have this very thick inorganic and organic polymers uh, to make uh, this high performance barrier film. But in the case of graphene, just we have used three layer and the six layer graphene, and they reach uh, 10 to minus 4 or minus 5. Even though it is not stable yet, I think uh, this is quite promising. So I think we need to control the density of defect and gram boundaries. And then you need to combine uh, this one with the polymers. But anyway, I think this is very use useful approach to get high perf barrier performance based on graphene. So in addition, it is rec recommended that uh, by Apple, so iPhone user uh, need to keep their cell phone at least 15 millimeter away from your body. So because of the electromagnetic radiation uh, from your cell phone. And you know, graphene has very uh, strong you know, electromagnetic interference shielding property uh, over very you know, ra large range of the, the wavelengths. So I think we can get 20 to 30% EMI shielding uh, by using graphene films. Actually, I'm showing this, I have shown this result two years ago in Korea, but uh, there's some you know, progress uh, in this one. So I'd like to introduce the copper replacement using graphene. So as you probably know, uh, the existing copper reserves available is available for mining vary from 20 to 60 years. And then uh, most of coppers are from these areas, and particularly from Chile. And as you see in uh, this figure, so actually, <coughs> copper is not forever. So someday, uh, probably, the, the mining of copper is, uh, will be, not be more available. So as of since the industrialization, the use of copper is increasing exponentially, and for the last few years, almost 10 times increased. So people are trying to you know, the replace uh, this copper with aluminum, with superconductors, and carbon nanotube, but uh, their perform performance is uh, not as good as copper. So we have tried to use uh, this uh, graphene fiber to replace uh, copper. And by controlling hydrophobicity and surface tension, the graphene stripe can be suspended in solution like this, and then uh, followed by formation of fibers like this. And then uh, we measure their elect uh, mechanical property and the electrical property. So their mechanical properties are a little bit poor than that of aluminum, but it shows reasonable value. And so it is very hard to define the diameter of uh, the graphene fiber. Just we, just we have used this effective conductivity of graphene fiber uh, based on their uh, density, or the density like this. Now if you consider the dense, low density of graphene fiber, the, the conductivity of the graphene fiber is better than that of copper. So we didn't dope graphene fiber at all. So I think uh, if you use some doping method, and it is possible to you know, the, get the better performance than uh, the copper. So we have used this uh, graphene fiber for this uh, LED, op LED operating at one five volts uh, with the graphene fiber. So it shows linear IV uh, up to 50 volts. So it's quite stable. And then the, together with the uh, 
electrical wire company. Uh, we are developing this graphene coated electrical wires. So this is bare copper, uh, nickel coated copper wire. And then after only wiring wire, uh, the surface is it is uh, very rough. But after we you know, coat graphene wire, it looks very rough. But <coughs> we, the conductivity can be enhanced uh, up to 50%. So if you look at this TM analysis of uh, graphene coated nickel copper wires, and here we see multi-layer graphenes are formed on top of nickel. So we compare uh, the conductivity of this wire uh, depending on the diameter of copper and nickel copper wire. So in the case of copper wire, uh, the larger diameter shows uh, less enhancement, but in the case of nickel coated copper wire, as the wire diameter increases, uh, we can we could get uh, the better you know, conductivity. As you see here, uh, this is saturating somewhere here. But anyway, conductivity of the copper wire can be enhanced by using this graphene. That means that we can use much less copper for the. The, the wire with the same capacity or same performance. So the, I'm working with uh, LS Cable. Uh, the company is world's third largest uh, the wire company. And they are really uh, serious about this one uh, for the commercialization, commercialization of this, uh, wa the graphene coated wires. And then we design uh, the real Roll to roll in you know, a pilot layout like this. In this case, we don't need any transfer. Just after we prepare the nickel coated copper wire, then just, just we grow graphene using this roll to roll uh, chamber, and then that's it. So we can use graphene uh, after insulating this graphene uh, coated wire uh, with polymers. So I think this is very close from the real applications. So. I think, uh, okay, this is good approach. So another good application is the use of graphene electrode for the, the batteries. Uh, since the spacing between graphene layers are much larger than that of graphite, uh, so we, it, we can charge uh, this battery 10 times faster than uh, this conventional batteries. And also the capacity is much larger than uh, the case uh, with uh, the graphite electrode. So many people are working uh, for this graphene-based uh, the lithium-ion batteries. Okay, finally, I'd like to introduce this uh, results uh, recently published in ACS Nano. We collaborate with uh, Barbaros and the NUS group, and they have used our graphene for to grow the stem cells. Uh, and as you see here, in this case, we have we didn't we didn't use inducers and we have used inducer, inducers. So without inducers, actually, in the case of no graphene, almost no cells uh, have grown on top of uh, this glass substrate. But we don't know the reason very well. Actually, uh, graphene can initiate the differentiation of human stem cell to bone cells without inducing any uh, inducers. So I think probably this kind of bio-application is very promising in the future. So after you grow graphene on top of this film, just imagine that we can transfer this stem cell to into your body uh, for reconstruction of your, your, your bone or uh, the neuron cells. Uh, actually, we don't know the, the safety uh, problem of this graphene yet. Uh, but I think we need to uh, more focus more on this bio application in the future. Okay, this is summary of my presentation, and then I expect large scale, you know, production and the real the commercialization can be realized in near future. Uh, but as you see in this movie, the future of graphene is very bright, but uh, current status is like this. Just we just realized the use of graphene for this flexible touch screen, 
but there are really many things to do. For example, we don't have flexible batteries, we don't have flexible transistors. So I think uh, probably uh, we need to wait uh, probably longer than 10 years or 20 years to see these flexible devices. Uh, but I guess we need hope, we, we have a dream. So I guess uh, then graphene will uh, contribute a lot for this the flexible electronic application in the future. Okay, thank you for your attention. Um, well, when you're uh, talking about the, when you grow the uh, graphene on the CMD, mm -hmm. they have a lot of the ripples. Yes. So when you transport, then uh, it's like strains relieved. Mm. Is that that's due to the thermal expansion? between the copper and the graphene different, so we transfer to the other substrate, so the people disappeared. So actually, as shown, as shown by the, the Berkeley group, I think the thermal expansion makes, uh, you know, multifully folded graphene. Uh, it's, it's a little bit larger than the nano ripples. So we call it macro ripples, micro ripples or something like that. And their periodicity is longer than you know, hundred or tens of micros, micrometers. Uh, so the reason why uh, that you know, ripples is not so important for our device is that if you make, a, for example, five, nan five micrometer long device, there is almost you know, of no chance to make device across the ripples. So again, we can ex ex exclude the possibility so that we claim uh, that the nano ripples are very important. I would like to ask, ask a question about uh, <coughs> graphene with um, organic uh, uh, materials, the pentathene. Mm -hmm. uh, why would the mobility increase? Uh, so the limitation for mobility in organic single crystals mm -hmm. is due to frolic polarons at the interface with dielectrics. Here you are changing the contacts. Yes, that's so very <coughs> good question. So I didn't show the detailed uh, the orientation of uh, the pentasen on graphene. So, so for pentasen uh, as a channel, you know this vertical stacking uh, is better than this uh, this kind of stacking. So if you induce some deep, you know uh, the contamination on top of uh, this graphene, we can intentionally uh, enhance this vertical stacking. So that there's two factors. Uh, one is from uh, the contact resistance. The other is the change of uh, the crystalline orientation of the pentasen to enhance the mobility. So recently we published a paper in JAX. Uh, then, yeah, I'll give you the re reference later. Okay. You briefly mentioned um, growing graphene directly onto hexagonal boron nitride substrates. Has anybody sort of thought about the actual mechanism? Because clearly that isn't catalyzed and it's not by the sort of mechanism you sort of expect from growing directly onto metals. Uh, so we don't know the mechanism very well, but there's already some report that the graphene can be grown on insulating substrate like magnesium oxide or sapphire or something like that. So I guess. Uh, even on top of copper, uh, it, it was not fully understood. Uh, actually, you know, Roof claims is kind of self-limiting uh, mechanism. So the carbon sources are, you know, temporarily absorbs on copper and then migrates yeah. uh, to make the hexagonal, you know, you know, lattice. So I think probably I mean, this is similar to that of the. So you think it's the same as similar sort of mechanism to the copper rather than. Because certainly if you sort of look at other things like nickel, you so, yeah. get absorption of the, right. and then precipitation so, of the carbon out. Yes. But I, I would have thought the copper surface actually acted as a catalyst. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised myself that it's sort of growing on an inert surface like that. Yeah, so... Actually, actually, I doubt this result. That's why I try to reproduce this one, but it works. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, it's very hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very hard, hard to explain. I was about to ask you a question, but maybe I can make a comment about that. Uh, about 
two years ago, the group in North Texas University oh. um, sent us uh, samples of this uh, oh, really? oral nitride graphene. Mm. And as I see from this uh, picture, mm. uh, it has the same problem, a very large deep peak. Um, yeah. And uh, it just does grow well. Mm -hmm. But any surface will give you graphene because that's a stable form of carbon, provided that you have enough uh -huh. thermal energy to decompose the universal mm -hmm. gas. Okay. And people, of course, now report just about everything, mm -hmm. certainly gold mm -hmm. and other metals mm -hmm. that do not interact. Mm -hmm. So the catalysis part is not very strong, mm -hmm. it's just heat. heat. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask a, a detail. During your talk, you saw a, 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 what you call an anomalous temperature dependence. Uh, yes. Strong uh, and you said there is something else going on. Uh, I wonder if both electron and hole transport shows this uh, temperature dependence. Actually, we didn't compare carefully. So we, I think we just measured uh, the temperature dependence on hole side, I guess. Uh, there was a question that was asked I think, yesterday by someone involving electron phonon coupling and there are several reports already in the literature uh -huh, where yes where people obtain different deformation potentials for electron state holes and, so, uh, and if you follow that line of research it may lead you to what is going on okay thank you thank you for comments regarding the coated copper where you coat the copper with graphene mm -hmm. Do you understand the physical mechanism for the enhancement of the conductivity? Enhancement of conductivity? Yeah, the what, what's the physics behind this? Physics. Uh, so, ac the, we think that uh, actually if it works when the dimer is very small, uh, then usually uh, there is a skin effect of the copper. So, even though we use very large diameter copper, only surface area of the copper you know, contribute to the conductive of the total those wires. So if you, we, if you have graphene on top of copper, uh, we have additional channel uh, in addition to the skin of copper. So this is just at very high frequency. It's not a, we can't start using this for power cables then. But you know, the, the power cables even use you know, 70 hertz, you know, the, this, 70 hertz, you know, the AC uh, voltage. Uh, so we measured uh, uh, this conductivity, uh, this one, but I cannot say like that. Uh, but there is some, you know, additional conducting, you know, channel through graphene, uh, that I believe. Not <laughs> so conducting. Uh, not conducting. <laughs> no. Uh, and then when you put the graphene on water, how do the how, what's the, the chemical the method? The, that irons out the ripples. A uh, ripples? Yeah. Uh, what, how, what does the water do? The water's uh, suspension? I think simply, uh, I think simply we have the foldy structure, then there's a, a kind of stress or strain. So on top of water, it can you know, naturally release. Uh, so yeah, this actually we are preparing that uh, as for the referee report. Uh, so the referee, I don't know. So some of uh, someone in this room uh, is our referee, but is it is it the best <laughs> liquid, or could you use some org uh, organic liquid? Would that be better? Or is, or is water best? Just water. Uh, just on, on top of water, graphene is floating, but in organic solvent, actually it sinks. Uh,